If I could attribute my progress to one thing, it would be clarity. And I'm sure many other successful or people that have made a lot of progress can agree with me here that clarity or ordered consciousness or the ability to create based on a specific vision they have for the future of a project, for their life, for anything macro, micro, on all planes of reality, is how you see immense progress in this world. Clarity is what makes focus seamless. It's what makes you channel your attention through focus. It makes that process seamless. And I'm sure many of you can assume where I'm going with this with the age of information and technological advancements and distractions being thrown at you from all directions, focus is an absolute must in this world. As a kid, when I was around plus or minus 12 years old, I can vividly remember myself sitting in the back seat of my dad's old Chevy Blazer. I believe it was a Chevy, the old Blazers, right? I would sit back there with a notebook and I would just sit and draw and try to tap into whatever creative ability I had at that time. And most of the time what I drew was like a, a humanoid type feature, either like a robot or a muscular man. Some of them had halos, some of them had horns, right? It, it, to me, it showed my ability as a child that everyone has and everyone can tap into to just create something that mimics life. As I grew up, this notebook of mine, or the multitude of notebooks of mine, gained a new purpose. They were less about drawing imaginary figures and they became more about, about creating or visualizing imaginary futures, right? You see this all the time with some self-help or self-improvement people is that they are very big on writing out goals writing out their vision for the future, what they want to achieve, what they can work towards, right? And what they're doing here is they are creating clarity. They're creating clarity so they are able to act in accordance, whether it be consciously, subconsciously, or even sometimes unconsciously, in alignment with that vision for their future. They are planting a seed in their head that their actions can follow. Because think about it, if you don't do this and you aren't being intentional you aren't stretching towards something. That's almost quite literally what intention means from the Latin root is to stretch towards something, to pay attention to something in the future, to focus on something and allow your actions to follow what you are focused on and what you are stretching towards. Now, I am iffy on the concept of like affirmations and manifestation and all of this stuff that can be quickly misinterpreted by if you aren't congruent with the voice that you are hearing those words from, it can quickly be misinterpreted into something woo woo and like, oh, you're, you're just the law of attraction. What's that manifestation? What are you doing? You're just imagining things without action and all of this other stuff. But no, you have to, from my perspective, you are framing your focus. As we said earlier, you are aligning your actions, whether it be consciously, subconsciously, or unconsciously, to manifest what you want in your life. And if I can think back, it's insane that I'm sitting here in this room right now. Because as a kid, when I would go and visit my sister, she lived in Texas. She lived on this strip, this very city, big city type feel where there were shops downstairs. She lived in a high rise apartment. The apartment was super nice. And I was just a kid sitting at home in my room playing video games and all of this other stuff. And I would consistently imagine myself living in a location like that. It had always been a dream of mine, a dream of mine to be able to walk anywhere I want, to have things that are close to me, to live in a nice environment with trees right outside of my window rather than a desert, which I used to live in in Arizona. And I've been thinking about this a lot, and this is a very big topic that we're about to dive into, but I now live in a very similar location that my sister used to live in. I live in Texas. I live on a street where there's a ton of shopping malls. I walk to a coffee shop every morning. I'm going to walk to the gym after this. I barely have to drive. I have great food all around me. I'm very grateful for all of this stuff, by the way. But it, it, it's kind of just mind-blowing to think about how that happened. Awareness begets awareness. 
Thoughts beget thoughts. Ideas beget ideas. I can go on and on about this. You cannot become aware of something up here if you were not first aware of the something here, right? We talk about this concept of the unknown all the time and we think of it as a map in a video game where the areas that you have not explored or become aware of, they're not available to you. You are not conscious of them. You don't know what is there. You can only assume what is there. And so you have to reach one location before you reach the next. And eventually you create this network that you can tap into with your awareness to pull from to not only be creative in your endeavors, but to just expand your mind and open your mind to new perspectives, new realities in a sense, and all of that fun stuff. And my point with this is, is that you cannot create a positive future reality for yourself if you have not first imagined it, right? If you don't have that ordered consciousness on what you are trying to create, you don't have the clarity on the future that you are trying to actualize or create for yourself, then there, it's going to be very difficult for that to be manifested or created or your actions just lead to that point in life because you could imagine it first. It has to be imagined and vice versa. You can only create a negative reality for yourself because you have already imagined and then experienced something. And that brings up what I believe to be one of the biggest problems that we are facing today as humans, because humans are the only ones that can really face this big problem because of our advanced cognitive abilities. And the big problem I'm talking about here is psychological time or linear time. And when I say psychological time is you can visualize a, a, a past experience that you were already made aware of. Notice how I'm saying aware here. You can envision a time in your life where you felt terrible, where you were in emotional turmoil and all of these bad things were happening to you. And if you do not uh, order your consciousness or focus on that point in time correctly or in a positive way, then you are quite literally pulling that experience into the now. You are feeling that same experience that you felt then. You're feeling stressed. Maybe you are reminiscing on a past experience like you had a bad breakup and you're starting to experience the same feelings and emotions that you were experiencing at that time. And as you repeat these things in psychological time, the familiar past, possibly negative, and the uh, predictable future because you've already lived out experiences and you're projecting into a future that you can imagine and visualize very clearly. And if that's negative, you can pull that experience into the now and have those feelings, thoughts, emotions, etc. And the more you do this and you allow this possibly unconscious behavior of projecting into the predictable future or reminiscing on the familiar past, you are quite literally hardwiring neural networks in your brain related to those experiences. So that becomes your personality. If you want to dive more into this, I would recommend reading Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. He does a much better job at explaining the science behind this, and I'm not too interested uh, in the science. It's not very congruent with me. I like the spiritual aspect. I can apply that to my life very easily where other people, they're more congruent with the scientific uh, point of view regarding those same topics. It's just a different lens of viewing it. And they're able to apply that to their life much better. But that's one thing that I pulled from it is that as you are doing this, you are hardwiring those neural networks. That's what conditioning programming is. Our mind kind of mimics uh, a harmonic oscillator or a system, right? And that's what the neural networks in our minds do. They're hardwired and it makes it habitual to tap into that experience. So you wake up and you immediately think, oh, stressful boss at work. You pull that stressful experience into the now. You have those chemicals throughout your body and it can quite literally cause you to be sick by living as your past self or just thinking about the predictable future of like, oh, this is going to happen to me. And you think that you imagine it first. Awareness begets awareness. And what do you know? It happens. You actualize that vision. Now, the only way to solve this problem is one becoming conscious of those negative thought patterns and experiences. But at the same time, it's diving into the unknown because 
as humans, we love that familiarity. We love habits. We love being able to automate thought processes and take shortcuts. That's what we, that's our survival mechanism in our brain was, okay, this past experience happened. It caused a negative experience. It threatened my survival. I need to remember this for later. And I need to kind of create this system in the body, possibly. Don't take this with a grain of salt. This is speculation, but uh, it creates a system where, okay, this thing caused a reaction. This caused a negative experience in me. And now I'm experiencing that and living in this stressful internal environment because my body and my mind thinks it's being threatened on a physical survival level. You see what I'm saying here? So we have to dive into the unknown. We have to think new thoughts. We have to have new ideas. We have to gain awareness that we didn't have before by doing the hard thing and kind of leaning into the discomfort of life that will threaten our survival. And you have to come at this from a perspective of, hey, this isn't actually threatening my survival. This isn't going to kill me. This may kill a few of my beliefs, which is going to cause that stress response. But at the same time, it's just a belief and you are able to create these new ones that will lead to a beneficial future for yourself. So I wrote a tweet and this is a concept of mine. It's called tactical stress. It says tactical stress is the conscious decision to put yourself in a do or die situation, knowing that you have the skill to make it work and will accept nothing less from success. So what this is saying, what I did personally, when I had the clarity and the vision of what I wanted to do, I made it so that I had to act on that urgency, right? And what I meant by that is I wanted to move into a new location. It wasn't this one, but it was a step down from this, a step up from my last one, where it was a nice place, nice pool. The rent was way above my level, but I knew I had the skill to make more money through the internet with my skill set, branding, marketing, sales, all of that fun stuff that allowed me to do that because I exposed myself to it before I had that awareness. I had the ideas that beget this new idea of what I'm able to do with those skills. So I knew the money was there. Now, the only thing that I had to do was put myself in that environment. I signed the lease, even though I wasn't able to afford it at the time. And that caused something in me. I, I just was taking action left and right. I was uh, moving these levers that allowed me to make more money and free up more time for myself and afford this place. And that is when I hit my first 50K month as a consultant. Now, of course, use common sense here. This is not my responsibility for what you do. It's kind of my responsibility, but make a fucking wise decision with what I'm saying here. Now with this, this brings up the concept of risk. And I would argue that 90 plus percent of the population are a walking contradiction. They think, they think something like that is a risk when it will bring massive reward. But what's riskier? You, you tell me, think about this. What's riskier? Diving into the discomfort that life holds where a positive potential future lies for yourself or repeating the same familiar uh, thoughts, beliefs, and experiences that you have had for the past 10 years of your life. Which is more risky? Which is more risky? Now we're going back to clarity, the greatest skill that you can develop of the 21st century, clarity and connection. Another tweet of mine, clarity primes you to get into flow. Clarity primes you to make the sale. Clarity primes you not to overthink. The ability to order consciousness in yourself and others is the most valuable skill of the 21st century. Clarity is what brings action. You, to get clarity, we will go over this soon, you need a vision for your future. You need a hierarchy of goals to get there and you need prioritized, simplified, low friction tasks that just make it easy to actualize that vision on any plane of reality, whether it be a uh, project that you're working on, a social situation that you're uncomfortable with going through, or just your life as a whole. So this presents a concept that I have been working on for the past two or three years. I called it 
originally the creation hierarchy and it was a bunch of steps and it started with a vision you break it down into a big goal small goal intention consistency curiosity and i had all of these things there and i knew that there was something more to it i knew that there was a way to package all of this up into a simple way but this simple way has a lot of depth to it i'm writing an entire fucking book on this thing and it can't be explained in one graphic or one video and i will continue to piece together the puzzle for you in future videos but for now i'm going to throw up a graphic i would highly recommend that you screenshot this graphic and study it and try to make connections to this as you are going about your day-to-day -day experience so this is the creation pyramid i put it up on the screen and at the top, you have your experience, your experience. Next is vision, then goals, then process, drive, and focus. Under that, you have your state of consciousness, the energy to create, the intrinsic alignment, and everything to go along with that. So let's dive into this a bit. The first thing is to think about this from an immaterial perspective, not a material perspective right? We're imagining things here. This isn't a physical, this isn't matter, right? Because you, there, there's the common saying of like, you need to act in alignment with who you want to become. And a lot of people mistake this as, oh, I'm, I'm just going to fake it till I make it. Like I'm going to fake results until I have those results when that's not the case. If you can reminisce on the past and bring that experience to your present reality, like if you had that negative experience with a breakup and then you are feeling those same emotions, you can do the same in the unknown aspects of life if you can visualize it clearly and the experience that comes with that. Because one thing, you, I guarantee, and this may cause something in you, you don't want that fancy mansion. You don't want that fancy car. You don't want that hot, sexy girlfriend. You don't want that big muscular body. You and you do want those things. I'm not saying you like absolutely don't want those things, but it's you may be misinterpreting what you actually want because there's only one thing that you have, and that is your present experience. You want the experience that comes from getting those things. You've been conditioned your whole life. You're like, oh, that guy has a mansion. He looks like he's having fun. He's driving the sports car around. He has this adrenaline flowing through him. And when you see that, you get a little bit of that experience, right? That's what you want. And if you come at all of this from an immaterial perspective, rather than, oh, I want that fancy car, it's like, no, you visualize your future and the experience that comes along with that. Like when you imagine a vacation you were previously on and the experience that was with that, the feelings, the emotions, and you can kind of feel that experience in the now, that's what I'm talking about here. That's energy when you bring your focus and your attention and your consciousness to this thing that you want to create you can pull energy into the now in order to help you actualize it that's a big part of that graphic that i threw up where where you bring your focus there is potential energy there everything is energy everything is information everything is frequencies frequencies hold information and your ability to process and interpret that information in a positive way in order to raise your vibration, so to say, that's just a huge plus and it allows you to bring that experience into the now and live a better life and create a better life. So that was the top of the pyramid. That was experience, right? The little white part of the pyramid, that is experience. The next thing is vision and creating a crystal clear vision for your future. And now it's not, don't overthink this. Don't project, don't, don't do certain, don't misinterpret this. When I say crystal clear, this is a process of time because right now you are kind of reaching into the unknown and trying to create something with the information and energy that is there, right? You are trying to form something that allows you to tap into that experience. Now, I want to make this comparison. When I am writing, here's a content creation tip. When I'm writing anything and I have this slight vision of what I want to create, I have the idea for the actual video, but I don't know what to write. I sit down to write and nothing comes to mind. So the way that you 
that I have grown to start to create these things is I will outline it first. And if you outline something, this isn't just for content, this could be your life for the situation that you're going into when you get home and you're going to see your kids. Is it going to be positive or negative? How is that conversation going to flow? What reality are you going to create? So you create an outline of this stuff. You create an outline of your vision, right? And then what that allows you to do, you've kind of set like anchor points. You've ordered some consciousness in the unknown. And now as you go about day to day life, now that you're aware of these things, it allows you to become aware of the things that apply to that, right? When I outline, let's say this video, right? I outline this video and then I go on a walk and I'm maybe listening to an audiobook or I'm talking to people. I can connect those experiences. It really doesn't matter what I'm reading. I could read about like mechanical engineering and something will stick out because everything's the same. Everything's connected and it will give me inspiration for what I'm actually creating. It will fill in the holes of my uh, vision, my outline for my vision of what I'm trying to achieve at that point in time. And this doesn't only happen when you're like consuming things, but your subconscious, when you do that and you make an intention to fill that out, your subconscious will start to pick up and send information to your conscious mind to fill that out. It's like Gary Halbert, I think, or David Ogilvy, or really most writers, what they do is they brainstorm, they outline everything, and then they fuck off. They go, they do nothing, they lay out by the pool, they listen to some music, they go and they have a fun night out, and the idea, the perfect idea, pops into their brain. They have that breakthrough, that aha moment, and they are able to come back and create better. This is a constant process of iteration, refining your macro vision for the life you are trying to create. Now, the next step, and we talk about this a lot, and this is the over encompassing concept. This entire video will, will form the foundation of every other video I've posted ever. That's how big this is. And so the next step is you, we have experience, we have the vision. The next step is goals. So breaking it down and trying to get clarity. This can also be considered an outline, right? You see what I'm saying here is where you are creating goals here and there to gain more clarity and allow yourself to make more connections through your everyday experience to gain that clarity on actualizing that vision. Now, a lot of this depends, the goal setting here depends on how big or small this vision is. You can even think of the goals as micro visions in themselves, right? So if we are thinking on the long time span of life, you can break it down into more chunked down goals where you have maybe a 10 year goal and then you have a one year goal and then a monthly goal and then a weekly goal and then even a daily goal or just priorities. Like everything is a goal. And this is why video games, as we talked about in the last video are so addictive. And this is why we do what we do as a whole is because either culture or ourselves or our parents or other things have constructed a hierarchy of goals that allows us to actualize a specific vision that those goals stem from. It's like a quest in a game. Do this, do this, do this, and you will receive this vision that you can imagine and the experience that comes along with that. Now again, this is number four, by the way. We have experiment, we have vision, we have goals, and now we have, as number four, process. A process that we can repeatedly execute on in order to actualize that vision and um, hit the hierarchy of goals that we have created. Now, I really like to think of life or really anything, whatever the vision we create is, whether it's for our life or for a specific situation in this very moment, or even like a week long vision or whatever it may be. I like to think of all of this as a science project or an experiment. Everything is an experiment because that's the thing is scientists, they have a hypothesis. They have some kind of vision for what results they are trying to get. Do they create a replicable process for getting that result right away? No, they take time, they test, they analyze results, they follow the scientific process, which I'm throwing up on the screen, 
which is they observe, they research, hypothesis, experiment, analyze, and then they get the result. And so patience, surrender, faith, we're pulling in a lot of concepts here, is necessary during this time because a lot of people aren't okay or comfortable with this uncertainty, right? It's like, why don't I have a replicable? Why can't I get this result right now? I want this result right now. I'm so used to this instant gratification and all of this other shit. I need it now. That's not going to happen. You need to surrender, have faith, trust the process and allow this the time that it needs in order to manifest or in order for you to just test enough things and gain enough awareness and clarity to make it work. Because that then presents us with two options. It's either I feel uncomfortable now, this isn't gonna work. You know, all these limiting beliefs come into your mind during this testing process, this experimentation process in the unknown, exploring the unknown. It brings a lot of uncertainty and the emotions that can come from that. And if you aren't able to navigate those emotions and approach them mindfully, then the only next option is I'm gonna go back to this certain lifestyle. I need to go back to, I need to get this job that I may not really like, but it's secure, it's predictable. I need, I need that predictability. No, you don't. Because clarity stems from chaos. Order stems from chaos. There has, there's the ebb and the flow. It's like how it reflects the highs and the lows, the ebbs and the flows in frequency of information. There's highs, there's lows. When you hit a high in life, it's almost inevitably gonna go into a low point of life and the labeling and the uh, misinterpretation of these periods of life as positive or negative or good or bad is really just sense or nonsense or order and chaos and you projecting your feelings and emotions onto those are going to bring that energy and experience into the now when you are experiencing those periods of life. So if this part of the journey makes you anxious or even bored at times. I want to bring back up Mihai Chikset Mihai's flow model, which I'll pop up on the screen. So if you are anxious, that usually means that you are trying to tackle something that you don't have too much clarity on. So the solution to that is self-education. It's learning. It's learning, 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 and applying in real life so you can gain that awareness that begets the next step of awareness. And now if you are bored when you are executing in order to test and actualize this vision, if you're bored, it usually means that you're doing something that you are too skilled for. There's no challenge there. There is no challenge there. And so when you fall out of this uh, skill to challenge ratio, it is very hard to be present because you don't have clarity, right? So you need to mold your mind in a way that allows you to immerse yourself in the present moment because of this and tap into that flow state. Now with all of this, we're gonna go into num number five, but for all of this, I am assuming that you are executing on a daily basis. You are applying what you are learning and you are actively working towards actualizing this vision, right? Because now we have experience, vision, goals, process, and number five, is drive. It's the intrinsic drive, not extrinsic drive and motivation, not things that are fickle and have no meaning to you and are just there for a quick dopamine hit in order to get something done. No, this is a sustainable and powerful way uh, of fueling your daily actions and making those actions seamless, right? So I want to bring up Stephen Kotler's five intrinsic drivers, which are curiosity, passion, purpose, autonomy, and mastery. At the very beginning, these are going to be curiosity, passion, and purpose. So I've noticed this quite a bit. One, because all of these bake in inspiration. When I'm reading something that I'm genuinely curious about, or when I'm doing things that I want to do with my time, then, you, I mean, you can't beat that energy, right? When you're reading a book and you're like, oh my God, that makes sense. That is, man, that's so good. And you're kind of living off of that energy. Uh, you use that to fuel your daily action. So what I do, and you can go back to my three habit morning routine video, is where I walk outside in the sun and I come and I do my creative, my creative habit, which is a free challenge 
link in the description. It's called seven days to genius ideas. It helps you become more creative. And then I get straight into focus work because I have that inspiration. I'm remembering my why for certain things. I have purpose behind my action and that's what allows things to flow. And it's a constant flow in my day where in the afternoons, I'm also consuming information in alignment with my curiosity and I'm making the connections. The passion is found at those intersections. I'm making the connections. It's, it has a, I have a purpose behind what I'm actually doing. A big problem that I'm solving and intentional about solving that will help me get towards my vision for the future that my curiosities and learning allow me to solve better and give me more clarity on that. I'm feeding off of the clarity that I have in order to gain more clarity for something that is bigger. Now, number six is to control your attention and learn how to focus or at least understand focus. So this will be a future video 100% without a doubt. Um, it's outlined so I can tie my experiences back to it. But uh, I'm going to throw up one more graph. And as you can see, this video as a whole is very foundational and it kind of pulls everything into one and it's very difficult to explain all of it at once, but I'm doing my best. I hope you are enjoying this. But the graph, it's called the focus matrix. So there is deep focus, which can also be narrow focus or convergent focus. And then that's at the top. At the bottom, there's wide focus or open focus or divergent focus. And then on the left, there's unconscious. On the right, there's conscious. And all of these contain, this is kind of like a mental model or something that you can remind yourself of when you're feeling stressed, anxious, reactive, you can see where your focus is going, right? Are you unconscious and in a state of convergent focus where you're just focused on that one negative thing in your head and it's, it's pulling that present experience or it's pulling that experience and the emotions and feelings related with, to it in the now, right? How can you use this graph to become aware of how your focus is being placed? And then how can you start to focus your attention on the more conscious and the more conscious side? How can you move your focus from conscious, unconscious to conscious and move it from narrow or wide or convergent or divergent in order to effectively use in the situation that you are in and the things that you are doing at this very present moment. Now, this also leads into my theory and a huge part of the book I'm writing, The Art of Focus, is that focus and attention is how you tap into and channel and make a connection or kind of tune into the frequency of energy that you are you have available to you, right? And this, again, brings back the concept of awareness begets awareness. If you are unaware of something, of an energy or a frequency that you can tap into, and bring that into your present experience, then like you have to gain that awareness because the only thing you have available to your current mind are the things that you were made aware of, right? So all of these, if we bring back up the creation pyramid graphic, you can see the things on the side where if your focus goes to your vision, you can tap into that energy source. If your focus goes to your goals or your micro visions per se, you can tap into the experience of those, the experience that th those things present. And then same thing with the process and same thing with the drive. So the intrinsic drivers, can you focus on your why, right? If you remember your why and you focus on it, that is going to bring you the energy and experience that is associated with those things. Can you see how powerful this creation pyramid can be in your day-to-day -day life? You can quite literally uh, manage and manipulate and uh, control your attention to lead and create a better reality for yourself. And the other thing, when in doubt, you can always bring your attention to the present moment that will widen or open or diverge your focus where uh, kind of, but if you focus on the breath, you're becoming more present, you're allowing thoughts to pass. It's kind of like meditation in a sense when you're on a walk and you're listening intensely to an audiobook or your focus is divergent and you're kind of just like, you have that spatial awareness of your present 
conscious bubble that you are residing in. Now let's take the example uh, that I've used before in a few posts, um, but we're gonna talk about money for a bit. And when I say this, I'm talking about the vision here. Let's just paint the vision. Let's walk down the thing. Uh, the vision for the future is creative work, making six figures, and the experience associated with that is like, I just feel good deep in the flow state uh, and being able to spend a majority of my time doing creative work and having a great time and the positive emotions related to that. Now, the goals, the 10 year goal, let's say is a million dollars, right? And you can tap into that, but we don't have to make it super serious right now. We're just breaking it down for the sake of clarity. So let's say a million, a million dollars in a uh, million dollars a year in 10 years. And now let's break it down even further. So one year goal would be six figures, right? So one year goal is six figures. You can imagine your life and how it would look and feel and how the experience would be when you are making six figures. What can you afford? What can you outsource? How can you free up time on your hands? What does that lead to? And now breaking that down even further, six figures is like four clients a month at 2250, if I remember that number right, but that's four clients. So we're, we, that becomes much more tangible to us. We, be, we, come, we become very clear on how we can start to actualize this vision. If we only need four clients at $22.50 or you need 84 sales of a $99 project product, $99 product, 84 sales um, a day, I believe. Oh, a month. So you need, I don't know, something like that. There, you can break it down and do the math for yourself, but there are ways that you can break this down and make it tangible for you. Whether, and that's a one year goal. That's a one year goal. You have a lot of time to start to actualize this and you can break it down into monthly goals. So, okay, I'm gonna land my first client this month or a weekly goal. I'm going to send five DMs. Let's start small. I'm gonna send five DMs or cold outreach messages, right? That's how you land clients at first. Uh, or you're going to study and learn how other people land clients. So you can land that first client. Remember, if this makes you anxious in the flow model, then you need to self-educate. If you don't know how to land a client and it's like, oh, I'm so anxious about landing a client, then self-educate and learn by a course, by like just scour the internet for all of the information you can use to get that first client. And now if you wanna go the product route, well, you either need paid ads or you need an audience. And if you aren't aware of these things, then you need to start to self-educate. But let's say in order to build an audience, so you have traffic that you can send to a product, then you need to write, let's say three tweets a day and you need to engage with 10 people a day. So you get eyeballs on your profile or you need to network correctly in order to get people to share your content so you can grow off of their audience because they have eyeballs that can be sent to your offer. And then once you have enough followers or enough of a distribution network, then you can start to promote once a day and you can start to test and observe and see how that's doing and actualize the vision of your conversion rate per se. Now I wanna bring up a phrase and a tweet that I wrote that a lot of people liked. They liked this phrase and maybe it'll help you uh, understand where you can use this creation pyramid. So here's the tweet. Put in the physical, mental, spiritual, and financial reps. Become multi-dimensionally jacked. So whether you're starting a new project that will lead to more freedom and money for you, or if you are looking for a relationship and figuring out how to navigate everything that comes with that, and or if you're just looking for a better life in general, or you're looking to create a better video and you create a vision and an outline and goals and what you need to actually do and act on in order to create this video, then use the creation pyramid for that. So at the beginning of this video, I said that the ability to order consciousness in yourself and in others is the greatest skill of the 21st century. Now, why do I say that? Because communication, if you can give someone else clarity on something, on either a vision that they want to actualize or the goals to get there or something that just breaks them out and wakes them up to fulfilling their full potential, that is what we do. And we do it at scale online. That is what I'm doing here. If you haven't noticed, I'm giving you guys some kind of vision and goals in order to uh, reap the experience that comes with that vision. 
So your ability to do that online and for the creators and personal brands and solopreneurs or just entrepreneurs in general that follow me, you need to start to think of all of this, everything I say from a personal level and a collective level, right? As a society, we have a vision, we have goals, political leaders, they have a vision for their campaign and they give you goals on how to actualize it. Your brand, your personal brand, or if you have an e-commerce brand, or if you have some kind of business, this is what you are doing with all of the tactics that people are giving you, all of the tricks and the hacks. In reality, they're telling you, create a vision for your brand, right? What are you helping people work towards? What intention are you giving them? What are the goals to get there? How does that reflect in your content and in your products? How is it going to help them actualize that vision? For your products as a whole, what is the desired outcome? What is the vision? What are the goals to get there? How are you going to make that so seamless for them to make that behavior change in order to get that result, right? This is how you create anything. This is creation as a whole. Not only are you creating better life for you, but you're creating a better life for someone else when you start to think of things in this way, from vision to gaining clarity on that vision and actually bringing that vision to life. So the next time you feel lost in any dimension, whether it be finances, mental health, physical health, health in general, relationships, any, anything, spiritual dimension, the animal dimension, I don't know, anything. Refer to this, come back and use this creation pyramid to gain clarity on the life or the situation or the experience that you want to create for yourself. And with all of that, that is it for this video. If you want to steal all of my social media, branding, marketing, sales strategies from beginner to advanced, you can join Modern Mastery HQ for $5, link in the description, and then the digital economics cohort. Oh man, I believe, I believe at the time of this video that the price goes up by 40% today because it starts in three days. So if you want to enroll in that, it's, it's all of the stuff we're talking about here. It's digital economics. It's how to thrive in the creator economy or just online with online business. So I would encourage you to check that out in the description, see if you want to take advantage of that, but that's a rolling cohort. So the next one will be in three to four months. And then of course, please like, subscribe, share it with a friend. If you got something out of this video, share it, share the vision, right? And start sharing your visions too. Why not? It helps you gain clarity, but of course you need to act. Uh, um, take that back, whatever. I'm ending it here. I hope to see you in the next video. We're going to go over my entire life and business story pretty much, which will be a fun dive. So thank you again for watching. I love you guys. Have an incredible day.